have another incomplete Heath kit that was given to me by uh, the same guy who gave me the incomplete kit that was supposed to be identical to this oscilloscope. Maybe he thinks he might have the circuit boards. He's still hunting for them, but I, yeah, I'm not convinced that he's ever going to find them. Anyways, um, so I have this old power supply that's meant for a receiver and and it's missing all the parts. I have the, the uh, enclosure and I have a transformer and some wire. And here's the transformer. So this transformer will put up 13 volts at I don't know what amperage. Anyways, since I can't really do anything with this kit, I decide I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to cut approximately an inch off of this, and um, I'm going to rehouse my original do-it-yourself signal generator project into it. And this is just going to generate basically a, a tone. A, a, I'm just going to use it as a sine wave tone generator. So. Next, we're just going to cut this thing down and uh, drill some holes and get the thing put in there. Still have to figure out what I'm doing for the power supply, but I'll figure out something. So after a few unpleasant minutes of cutting this thing with a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade um, and a little bit of grinding, we got this thing cut down and. Uh, I'm not worried about it being totally pretty and flawless at this point. I just want it to work. So, um, wasn't that difficult. The, the thing that made it difficult about cutting it with the jigsaw was just that this is very awkward to try to clamp or hold. So, but I managed. So next we're going to drill some holes, put some graphics on there. I think we're going to go with this one right here. This one I, I like the best. So now I got to do a little bit of setter punching on the front of this guy and drill a few holes, put everything in here and figure out a power supply. So now we've got all the holes drilled and we're going to file some of the sharp edges down and um, Put the graphics on, and um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the bottom half. I might paint it, or I might see if I can just kind of scratch this lettering off with a scruffy pad or something. And I'm going to figure out what we're going to do for a little feet. I think I might power it with a, um, like a Max 1044 or something to like double the voltage of a 9 volt battery or actually I like to run it at 12 volts so I'm st still not exactly sure what I'm doing about the power supply on this but uh, we're getting close to getting it done here it is all completed I didn't think to take any video of me kind of in the middle of this process but we got everything in here it was a bit of a challenge to get all these things in this amount of space but with a little bit of thinking and planning we got it all figured out so here we've got our ICL 8038 uh, function generator circuit this is square wave triangle wave sine wave I only have the sine wave connected because I'm just using this as a, a variable frequency tone generator just for sine waves. Um, this c controls the, the level. I put an output level control on here. Um, this selects between your three different high, medium, low frequency range. I didn't use the high frequency because I don't really have use for anything above like 15 kilohertz. This adjusts the frequency. This is of course the on off switch. And uh, Normally I would be running this on 12 volts off a of power supply and this presented me with a little bit of a challenge because this won't operate on anything less than 10 volts. So for the first time I had to use an ICL 7660 charge pump. I've never used one before and uh, it's really shockingly simple 
to use these things, just one IC chip, two capacitors, two diodes, bam, your voltage is doubled. Um, so this is not the SCPA chip or this S that's supposed to run on the higher frequency. So when I first had this hooked up, um, I got that audible whining in, in my uh, output. So um, I did a bunch of research online and there's like apparently not really much you can do to get rid of that. Um, other than maybe changing the frequency with... Uh, a CMOS chip and I wasn't interested in going down that road that's just too complicated for for such a simple thing like this so I uh, after reading a bunch on this subject the last couple days um, I had a hunch that maybe if I took the ground off this and connected it to the chassis ground that that, that might that that might help and um, it actually worked <laughs> Um, cause before I had the ground connected right here and these output caps or the frequency selector caps here, uh, are, were connected to this ground point right here. And so basically I was injecting this, whatever pulsing was happening on the ground wire from this charge pump into the, the output of the, uh, function generator and I was getting that whining. So... I had a hunch that if I just took this ground wire and uh, soldered that wire to a little solder lug thing and put it between the standoff, actually it's between this standoff right here and uh, the, the board, you can see right there. So that worked out pretty well. And uh, it's quiet, and so now I'm putting out like around 17 volts on the power. Here's here's our graphics on there. And uh, I used some little mini Allen head screws to attach the standoffs to the enclosure. And then uh, had to notch the, the enclosure a little bit where the pots are so that they weren't, sh weren't shorting out. And I uh, also included the schematic in here and shrunk that down so it fit and uh, put some little cork feet on the bottom so then you know you just put this thing back on here a little tricky to do one-handed but so there we go I got some screws oh and I was able to uh, get rid of this lettering by using one of those Teflon pads and just kind of basically like sanding it off. And uh, I'm just going to leave the holes. I don't really care about that. And if I'm feeling ambitious later on down the road, I might put a DC jack here somewhere in the back so that I can run it off a of power supply. So here we'll just kind of demonstrate a little bit. You can hear the power supply whine a little bit like in this frequency range, but this is not typically something that I would be using um, in my testing, so I'm not too worried about that. This is primarily what I'd be using right in this range right here, so. I may get a um, different 7660 to put in here that runs in a higher frequency down the road, but for now, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. And uh, it's always nice to be able to repurpose something that is sitting around seemingly without any kind of purpose. And uh, it was a fun little project to do. There are times when I need to have a battery operated audio oscillator 
Um, sometimes I get these funny ground things that happen when I use my uh, DSO shell and uh, running off of the same power supply and uh, so you know if I can isolate things the the power supplies of different things, it's helpful too. So anyways, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Uh, I don't know, I was thinking about adding an LED also. I like to have an LED above your, above the power switch, um, which I might still do, but yeah, I think it's pretty cool. It's barely bigger than a Hammond 1590 BB and um, I like that it's really compact too, portable. It's just a fun little project.